Hello, hi, and welcome to today's video, uh, which is a continuation of our safety video series. If you need the basics, just check out my playlist. There should be an exclamation mark on the top of this video. Uh, or check out my channel. There should be a playlist about safety and about TIA in, in general. Um, what we did already in the last video is we set up the hardware and we set up already an e-stop circuit in our safety program. What we're going to do today is we're quickly going to look at two more functions, two more safety functions that are integrated in um, S7 safety here. And I'm going to take the first component that is a safety door, SF door. I'll put that in my program here and I will make this a multi instance. If we make this a multi instance, we have the um, data block just in our parameters up here. Right? We do not have an additional block here in our list and program blocks. We have this in our um, parameters on top embedded in the main safety function. So it's an advantage to use the multi instance here. By that we don't have all the say all the blocks somewhere in our program where we don't need them. Good. So the, you see this safety door has a lot of inputs. It has a lot of um, outputs as well, but not many three outputs, six inputs, seven inputs. <clears throat> and it's actually pretty easy to use. First of all, we want to set up the inputs for it. So we want to go to our device configuration. I go to my input module and I will create two new inputs. I will make this on channel one and on channel uh, two, these two, right? And I could now use one out of two evaluation or one out of one, doesn't really matter. I'll put them both one out of one. So the sensor, the door we are connecting, it has two sensors. One sensor goes into channel number one one sensor goes into channel number two and they both sensors just have one output e each so that one output means one out of one it's just one output here we go i will also add these here safety door one and safety door uh, i can't write um why does the safety door have uh, two sensors well first of all it's redundancy reasons right first is the redundancy so if one breaks we still have the other that can detect uh, it's always good for safety and the second reason is usually one of those sensors is normally closed and one is normally open so meaning one sends a one signal the other one sends a zero signal so that you can evaluate hey they have to be different if the door is open it's zero one if the door is closed it's one zero we're not going to look at that but that's why you usually have two sensors on your door so we got those added and we will of course add them here and the safety door has two inputs because the standard application is you have two sensors. If you would only have one sensor, you can just take the same sensor on both inputs. Oh, whoops. You can take the same sensor on both inputs. That's okay. If you just have one sensor which is not the standard case to go with all the standards and stuff to go with the safety regulations. You have to have two sensors uh, that's recommended for safety door anyway. There we go. The next two inputs, they are QBAD into QBAD in two. Uh, so they are actually analyzing. You see this, those inputs, they are yellow. These two are evaluating the status of the yellow behind. So of the safety module, if there is anything wrong with the channel, um, I will leave those open right now. If you need to know how to 100% exactly do it, click on the block, hit F1. The information system of TIA portal is going to open. And there you have an example how to use it down here. And you see there are predefined um, bits. There are predefined bits inside of the safety module. Those I don't you don't have to create them. They are there from the beginning and you could just simply connect them here. I won't do it because I am simulating and in simulation those don't do anything anyway. So I will just leave them out. Uh, it would be good to just connect them and they are there somewhere here in the list. You see there is a lot of stuff here. It should be somewhere in my digital input module and you see there's a lot of things in here. I will not look at this right now. All right, so we'll leave that out. If you need to know, check the information system. Uh, but for the functionality, for the base functionality, we don't need it. We can leave those open. Then we have open any egg that is open and necessary. That means we have to have a zero signal or, or yeah, the zero signal on both inputs in the beginning to be able to uh, use the block. 
So we need to go through the zero once to know, hey, it works. The door was open, now it's closed, from then on it works. Um, that's set to true, which makes total sense. Uh, then we have acknowledge necessary. That means if there is an error, if there was like, if these two have different states, even though they shouldn't, um, we have to activate the acknowledge. Always recommend it to leave it on. If you turn this to false, you're not going with the standard anymore. So recommendation, always acknowledge everything that happens. And the last, of course, it's all acknowledge input, the same as we had with the e-stop in the last video. I'll put my acknowledge on here. Yeah, That is already the safety door. That is pretty much the safety door. What I will do additionally is I will, whoops, I will create a so-called static variable here. Uh, and that is safety door output. And I will take that safety door output. It's the it's not safety door, this is a boolean, of course. And I will put that to the output here so we can use it later on. Right. Okay, done, download. And we should be fine. Consistent download, do I still have anything that is wrong in here somewhere? Let me see, what? I did not download the correct thing, sorry. <clears throat> here we go. Got it. So now it is downloaded to my simulation. I am using the simulation as shown in the last video. I will just add my two safety door here. Uh, safety door one and safety door two. So they are added to the program now. And now if I go online, we can basically play around with this, right? So now I can just, uh, hard to see. Yeah, that's okay. It's right behind my head. Well, hard to, yeah, I'm hiding here. So safety door one and two, if I activate both, right, I activate both, you see, we still need to acknowledge. Acknowledge request goes on because there is an error. The error is that they, they are being activated way too far from each other, from the time on, because I am slow. I cannot click on those in like a couple of milliseconds. If you close the door, of course, both contacts close almost at the same time. I will still have to acknowledge that error. I still have this input here. If I acknowledge it, you see the output turns true. Yeah. So that's the safety door. Pretty simple, pretty easy. What you would do now with the uh, block here, with the safety door, I would take this output and also say, hey, my motor here can only turn on if the safety door is also closed, right? If the safety door gives me the correct output. Done. Now the motor can only work if the e-stop circuit is fine and the safety door circuit is fine. Next block is a two-hand press, right? So there's a little bit more to this, but that's the basics. Next is a two-hand press. I'll put that in here. I'll take a multi-instance again so that we can find the, uh, the data block here in our parameters. Um, the two-hand press, for those that don't know it, I Googled it, I searched it up, and there it's those things, right? Let's uh, look at a good one. Uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, picture is this. Uh, it's two hand press. Basically, you have two buttons to start a process. You have to press two buttons because you have two hands. So you cannot activate it with one hand and the other hand is still in the machine. No, you have to use two hands. That's why we have two hand presses. And of course, those are safety devices, so they need a special safety treatment. And that's exactly what we're doing here with this block. It's a little bit more easy, as you can see. It has an input one, input two. Those are the two push buttons. So make a guess. We are going to add these to our input uh, input block here. I will also make these. Uh, let's make them one out of two. Let's assume they have one out of two evaluation. That's on the hardware side. Don't care about it. Um, those are two hand press and another two hand press. Right. Got two inputs. Well, we have two <laughs> two hands. If you would have three hands, it would be a three-hand press probably. By the way, it is freaking hot. It's getting summer and I'm sweating. I'm sorry if, if like, you can see my sweat. Ah, that's just how it is. And so we have this two-hand press block. I have my two inputs. Make a guess. Input one. Well, that's my two-hand press input one. It's very simple. This one is very simple. And the second one is my two-hand press number two. Then we have an enable here. The enable says, hey, this block can only output a one if the enable is active. So you could put anything that you want here. I will just take my e-stop actually. 
If my e-stop is active, the two-hand press can do something. If not, the two-hand press is not activated. Is, is not You cannot activate it. So I will put the e-stop here, done. The next that we have is a disk time, a discrepancy time. You press the first one, you press the second one, that was way too slow. You have to press them at the same time. This time is somewhat below 500 milliseconds. So one, two, way too slow. One, two, that's okay. One, two, at the same time. That's usually what you want. So this discrepancy time has to be exclamation point, something below 500 milliseconds, between zero and 500. There, it also says that if you go on top over it, zero to 500 milliseconds. If you type in 600 for 600 milliseconds, the block will not work. It will say, hey, that is against the standard. That's not a two hand press anymore. I'm not going to output anything. So here we want something like, I will, I will say 500 um, because I want to click that on the, in the simulation and 500 milliseconds is already pretty fast. So then we have our Q output. The Q output I want, of course, uh, here as well uh, as this. Two hand press output, whatever. And this is a Boolean. So I want to use this later on. So I'll just grab that and put that here. All right. That's it. That is the two hand press. I can download this now. I can show you that it works. Should work perfectly fine. And there we go. Usually you would have to program. You have to put a timer in there. You have to have some error evaluation. You have to have so many things. With a safety block, it's all done internally. You don't need to take care of it. It's done internally if you just put the correct parameters on there. I will take here, I will grab my two hand press number one, two hand press number two. There we go. Whoops, that is me. <laughs> and I can now go online and you will see if I activate the two hand press here, I can activate it. Boop, boop. And you see the output did not turn on. The output did not turn on because the enable is still off. So I have to turn on my e-stop, right? And you see e-stop is on. And you saw it also on the diagnostic output. There's a code. If you click on it and hit F1, there is a code list of all the diagnostics, right? What each diagnostic says. It's on the F1. I also don't know it by heart. I always have to read about it. So we have the two and press. Meh. Here we go, two and press. Now the e-stop is enabled. And if I now click both of them within 500 milliseconds, right? Within 500 milliseconds, you see the output turns on. If I release one, the output is off. If I only click one and wait for a long time and now press the second one, the output does not turn on because it was basically on, on. That's too slow. It's on, on at the same time, right? Within 500 milliseconds. That was too slow. I didn't hit the second one within 500 milliseconds works fine. See, that is the two hand press block. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I will also take this and put it here in front of my motor, done. Now the e-stop here is redundant because it is on the enable of our two hand press, but no one cares about redundancy. Redundancy is perfect. We're done. So that was the safety door block. That was the two hand press block. Pretty simple blocks, if you ask me. Uh, very straightforward. You just have to know it works. Uh, there's still some other blocks. Uh, yeah, I will probably make one more safety video about that next week. So for now, we're good with safety. Uh, don't forget to check out the little exclamation point that should be somewhere on the video here uh, to find the rest of the videos. Don't forget to check out my uh, in the by the way, in the uh, description below, check out my GoFundMe if you want to toss some coin in my direction. That'd be awesome because making those videos a lot of effort. Highly appreciate it. Thanks, Marco, for example, and Andre. I don't know if I thanked you already, but you can never thank you enough. Uh, and also, don't forget to check out the forum. If you have questions, there is a forum. Also, link in the description below. Um, check that out. And also, check out the comments below. Say hi say wish me a nice day i wish you a nice day you have to stay healthy and have a nice day see you in the next video and bye bye thanks for watching bye